Welcome for Premier Magazine, this is Ataman reporting. And we are here with uh, Jack Dungera, who is one of the authors of the famous Top 500. Um, and um, this morning we had a very new Top, uh, new, uh, top 500 with a very big surprise. But first I'll ask you, Jack, to introduce yourself a little bit. Okay, so I'm uh, Jack Dungera, I'm a professor at the uh, University of Tennessee. I also have a position at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which is very close to the university. I also hold positions at um, uh, the University of Manchester. I'm a visiting uh, scientist at uh, Moscow State University and also at uh, the University of uh, Texas A&M University. So I have a number of different hats I can wear. I've okay. been involved in the uh, Top 500 since it began, which is about 24 years ago. Hans had a list of the most uh, powerful machines and they were ranked by peak performance. And I had a benchmark which ranked machines by running uh, this benchmark. And the benchmark is the Limpac benchmark, as we, as we know. And Limpac solves this dense matrix problem. Um, perhaps 24 years ago, that was a challenging thing to do and uh, uh, really taxed uh, the machines and uh, showed the performance not only for that benchmark, but matched with real applications. Over the years, that benchmark uh, perhaps is not as relevant as it was uh, back then. But it's still used. We have a lot of historic data. Mm -hmm. And uh, the top 500 is something which I think will be around for, for a long time. We should also have other benchmarks that measure other things, but uh, let's not go into that discussion here. Uh, no, we only talk about the top 500. Fine, that's good. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. this morning we, we also talked about the merge of the green yeah, top 500. That's and so that's another aspect that's another that aspect. we... Let's talk about the top 500, because yes. some, what, what did happen this morning? Right, so today we had a very uh, interesting announcement. This is uh, the number one computer uh, was, uh, was, uh, was uh, christened uh, as the uh, new computer in China. That's the machine that goes by the name of the Sunway uh, uh, tai, Taihu Light mm -hmm. uh, computer. So the, Sun, the Sunway is a unique computer in that it is uh, uh, based on Chinese parts. That is, it's a Chinese processor, uh, Chinese, uh, they, they fabricated the interconnect uh, and uh, put the machine together. Uh, the machine was put together uh, at, the, uh, at the research facility they have in, in, in Wuxi. Uh, we think the chips were actually fabbed there in, in Wuxi. The, the machine is based on a many-core processor. That uh, many-core processor has uh, 260 uh, cores in it. Um, they're very lightweight cores. They have a cycle time of 1.45 gigahertz. Uh, each of those uh, cores is about a peak performance of 11 gigaflops. And that chip is a, has a performance of about 3 teraflops. Mm -hmm. And that chip is put together um, uh, in a certain configuration uh, to fill up a cabinet. Uh, and that cabinet has a uh, peak performance of three petaflops, one cabinet. One cabinet, And then yeah. they put together 40, uh, 40 of those cabinets to build out to of roughly 125 uh, petaflops. So the theoretical peak performance is 125. They ran the benchmark using all the cores. This machine has 10 million cores in it. That's the, that's the aggregate uh, core count for this machine. And uh, with, uh, with that full machine, uh, they ran the benchmark uh, uh, coming in at 93 uh, petaflops. 93 petaflops is roughly 74% of the theoretical peak. So that's a pretty impressive number. Um, in itself, uh, that is the, the, the rate achieved is impressive, but also the 74% of uh, theoretical peak. The other interesting thing is the power consumed during the running of the benchmark came in at uh, roughly 15 megawatts. Uh, so 15 megawatts of power was burned using that, uh, uh, was consumed during, was burned for, for that benchmark run. And that translates into um, uh, six gigaflops per watt. That's a pretty high number. That's a very impressive efficiency. Uh, most of the machines we see in the top 10 come in about two gigaflops per watt. So this machine uh, is three times more efficient in terms of power for that benchmark and is about uh, three times more powerful than the previous number one machine, actually 2.75 times more powerful. Mm -hmm. So um, that's quite a uh, combination. Um, uh, the machine uh, also has some other uh, interesting characteristics. Uh, it was used uh, in some um, uh, applications. And those applications were written up and submitted to the uh, SC conference as Gordon Bell uh, potential uh, uh, contendants. And the, um, they actually submitted five papers, and three of those papers 
were chosen uh, for Gordon Bell finalists. So just to put that in perspective, there's only six papers chosen from the conference for Gordon Bell finalists. So they have half of the papers that are running for uh, Gordon Bell. So I think that says, um, while this is a very powerful machine and they get a very high impact number, it's not just a stunt machine. That is, it's a machine that could be used for uh, real applications. Now, I don't know how much work went into uh, developing those applications, uh, but uh, it's not, uh, those applications present a non-trivial uh, implementation, where the benchmark is perhaps considered a trivial uh, implementation. Yeah, so you could say it's not only um, an impressive system, it's an impressive ecosystem. It's an impressive ecosystem. There are some deficiencies of the yeah. machine, and those deficiencies come about uh, when we start to move large amounts of data around. So it's, it's a good architecture, let's say, for doing very, um, uh, very dense uh, matrix kind of computations. Uh, however, if we start to move information, uh, move data through the memory hierarchy, uh, we start to see the weaknesses of the machine. The machine is using slow memory, it's DDR3 memory, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the network that they have uh, overall provides for a very, um, I would say, a poor interconnect system. So the, um, uh, another benchmark we have, which is called HPCG, that benchmark uh, does a lot of data movement. It implements, a, again, solving a system of equations, but this time using an iterative method where we have a sparse matrix uh, that we're uh, operating with. Uh, that benchmark uh, shows an efficiency of 0.3% of peak. So mm -hmm. that's a very low number compared yeah. to some of the other machines. The other machines come in about uh, between 1% and 2%, with the highest machine being the K computer which is about a little over 4.5%, 4, 4 I think it comes in a, a theoretical peak. So this machine has potential for certain kinds of problems to do very well, using all the, all the cores in the system very efficiently. Uh, for, however, for certain uh, problems, perhaps, which are more related to solving uh, three-dimensional partial differential equations, it's going to be very hard to extract that performance. Uh, from this architecture. Mm -hmm. um, so that leaves um, room for the others, I mean for Japan, the US and Europe to do something. Um, so what, what do you expect uh, for the next y uh, year or years for the top 500 right. in so, relation to that? Uh, so in the US uh, there's three big machines which are yep. planning to come online in the uh, 2018 time frame and they'll be phased in, uh, one at the beginning, one in the middle and one towards the end of that time period. And those machines would be roughly uh, equal or greater than the performance, peak performance for this, uh, for this machine. So that's about a year and a half away. So uh, I would say the Chinese certainly have a lead if we're measuring it in terms of uh, machines which have order 100 petaflop uh, performance. And that lead is perhaps uh, 18 months at this point. Um, in Europe, I'm not exactly sure what their uh, situation uh, is in terms of uh, big machines. Uh, so I can't really comment on, on yeah. the uh, situation there. And, you know, there's, um, uh, this machine has been in operation uh, for a little while, and there's uh, some speculation that they're working on the follow-on machine to it. So the follow-on machine uh, could take them to uh, uh, close to half of uh, exaflop uh, yeah. in terms of the performance, if not more. Okay. So when can we expect a new uh, number we'll one? Have to, we'll have to talk to the yeah. Chinese to find yeah, out yeah, exactly yeah, 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 yeah. when that would happen. Yeah. So this is, this is one of three projects in China. Uh, the, this is the Wuxi project. There's a project going on at the NUDT, the National University for Defense Technology in Chencha, uh, to uh, upgrade the machine that they have. They have the Tianhe 2. Uh, they're planning to replace all of the uh, Intel parts and replace them with other, uh, other designed uh, parts, which would take that machine over 100 petaflops. And then there's rumored to be a machine at um, uh, the Chinese Academy, which could, uh, which could come in with their own processor again. To, uh, to be in, in, this, uh, in this room. Thank you very, very much good. for this interview. Yes, thank you. For Prima Magazine, this was Art Emily Reporting.